Hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victor broadcast. Let's have a word of prayer, and we'll get right into today's Bible lesson. Father, we thank you. We give you praise and thanksgiving. We honor your word. We honor your presence. You are, you're the one we're looking to. You're the one we're looking at. Amen. You are our source. And all of these other things in the world that are making so much noise and all of that, no, we're looking at you. And we thank you and we receive and we bless you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you join me in welcoming Brother Keith Moore to this broadcast today? God bless you, sir. Thank you, sir. We're sure <laughs> glad to have you here. My I, pleasure. You're the busiest man in, in Missouri and Texas, both. And, <laughs> and for you to come down here and to spend some time with us, we just deeply appreciate it, man. It is an honor. Hallelujah. Keith, let's get right back in here. We're talking about faith that overcomes the world. This mm -hmm. is the victory, 1 John 5 before where we began yesterday. Mm -hmm. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Yes. Yesterday, through the scriptures and so forth they went, we went through, we, we came to this scriptural conclusion that there is nothing in the world order mm -hmm that faith won't overcome. That's but right. now it's faith in God. Yes. And it is our faith given to us by him. For, for a, a believer, I, I remember uh, just right after I went to Oral Roberts University and, um, in 67, now I'd been, a, I'd, I had accepted the Lord four and a half years before but I didn't know anything. I, I hadn't gotten into the Word. I, I was, I, I, well, I'd learned some things, but not like about faith until I got there. And the Lord, that's one of the reasons the Lord put me there. Mm -hmm. Not only through Brother Roberts, but Brother Hagin. Mm -hmm. And, and I, was, I, I was witnessing both their ministries at the same time. Anyway, I began to realize that for a child of God, a born-again believer, to go to God and say, give me faith enough to overcome this, it's not that you don't have that faith. When you accepted Jesus as Lord, you accepted him by faith, and God put that faith in you. Mm -hmm. So it's there. I realized that when I got there, and I, and, and I thought, wow, I've been begging for something I already have. <laughs> I've already, the problem with me is I don't know how to use it. Mm -hmm. And I noticed old Roberts it just <laughs> astonished me. On purpose, he used his faith like a mechanic would mm. go to the toolbox, pick out the tool that he needed, mm -hmm. go over there and play. You can't just get any tool. Mm -hmm. But then a mechanic has to be taught that. Mm -hmm. I had the faith. It was there. It was world overcoming faith. It's right here. If you read down through this, anybody that's born of God mm -hmm. has this world overcoming faith in them. Mm -hmm. So the reason I'm, I'm bringing all this out, I mean, get, you, get your ears out there and begin to listen. Open up your heart and say, I receive what these men are talking about. I have that kind of faith in me right now. And, and if I listen to the word, that then faith cometh. Well, what's happening? Faith is in there, and, the, and it, it connects with the Word of God, and God will show you how to exercise what you already have. Mm -hmm. And there ain't nothing in the world that what you already have from God that that faith won't overcome it. Yes, sir. But you need to pay attention. It'll work. Mm -hmm. Amen. But you yeah. have to put it to work. The, the faith that we have in us is a measure of God's own faith. And as such, it is undefeatable. It is unconquerable. But the enemy knows this. He's seen close up and firsthand what this faith 
is capable of, what it can do, and he is afraid of it. And so he, being who he is and how he operates, he has a number of uh, deceptions and wiles that he uses against believers to uh, hinder them from walking in faith. And a couple of the big ones that have been all too successful is if he can get somebody to misdirect or misplace their faith. That's big. Or if he can get them to become offended in their faith. Because faith uh, offended is faith lost. Uh, the person's no longer operating in faith. <clears throat> They've given it up. And so uh, I believe the Lord, like we prayed yesterday, is given us utterance in these broadcasts for folks that have made these mistakes because uh, uh, most all of us have made these mistakes in these areas, either a little bit or a lot, mm -hmm. out of ignorance or foolishness or a number of things. But uh, it, it grieves me, and I know it does you. We've talked about this that you see people that had made good progress and then some things happened and they became disillusioned now and they say, oh, you know, that faith stuff doesn't work and that's just a bunch of junk and I don't know about that. And it is so sad to see someone who has lost their faith uh, because, first of all, they're deceived. Mm -hmm. uh, faith in God has never failed. Never will. God has never let anybody down. Never will. But also, a person in that case, if they're going to say, okay, I'm not that believing God and that confessing and that sowing and all that stuff, I'm not doing that anymore. Okay, what are they going to do instead? Yeah, that's what was going on. <laughs> Where are you going? Yeah, yeah. Which is exactly what happened back in, um, in the book of John, in the sixth chapter we see a group of people who became offended and lost their faith and what, what happened to them. It is one of the saddest things to see a person lose their faith, not only because of what's happening at present, but like what we're talking about, what's going to happen in, to them in the future. Uh, in John... You know, Keith, you can't just stand static. No. You can't just stop right there and just spend the rest of your life right there in that little spot. Mm -mm. No, no. You're either going to go forward yep. or you're going to go back right. because nothing else is standing still. Right. If everything is moving all the time. Yep. And if, you, if you don't move forward, you're going to get shoved back. Yeah. The only way to move forward, the only way, is in faith. That's right. That's it? it. That's the only way to move. So you quit believing God you will go back. No, no ifs and ands about it. The only way to move forward is in faith. Do you remember that illustration that Brother Jerry did years ago about the guy out in the river? The boat. And he's paddling his little boat. <laughs> the, the minute he quit paddling, his boat would just turn yeah. around and head downstream. Uh -huh. Well, the whole earth is... It, it, it has... Uh, a negative flow mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. It's flowing in the wrong direction. It's yep. not going toward God, even though Jesus defeated that negative flow. You don't have to flow like that. Yep. You can turn it around, but not without faith. And that's a, that's a perfect example because what's the victory that overcomes the world? Even our faith, what's born of God overcomes. Well, that paddling or that motor is overcoming the flow of that current. And if there wasn't something flowing against you, you wouldn't need to be an overcomer. Right. There'd be nothing to overcome. But faith is what pushes you through this negative, fear, unbelief, pessimistic junk that the world is full of. And it is the only way to move forward and make progress and increase, come out, come up. Praise God. Only way. These folks here in John 6... We're listening to Jesus preach. <laughs> and uh, 
it, it's maybe challenging for us to believe that people could hear Jesus preach for hours and then decide he was off the wall. And that's not <laughs> but that's what happened this day. They decided he was in error and they weren't going to listen to him anymore. He had a message that God gave him entitled, Drink My Blood and Eat My <laughs> they Flesh. Didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> and the longer he preached... The quieter it got in the crowd. It wasn't because he wasn't anointed. No. Wasn't because he wasn't right. Wasn't because he hadn't heard from the Father. Wasn't because it wasn't true. And yet, as he, con as he continued to teach and preach this, I don't know, at least hundreds, maybe thousands, decided, I'm never going to another one of his meetings. I'm never preaching, I'm never listening to his preaching anymore, and I'm not going to support his ministry anymore. I do not believe on him. I don't believe he's who I thought he was. Uh-uh. And the thing is, the day before, they were the ones taking the most notes. They were the one waving their hand, hand shouting, hallelujah, this is yeah. the best thing we've ever heard. This is the move of God. This is the real deal. Until they heard this. And then just like that, on that, with this one situation, they decide, no, I'm, I'm unhooking from this. I'm not going to be a part of this anymore. And the Bible said, verse 66, John 6, 66, from that time, many of his disciples, so these weren't just folks, that, curious people that dropped in the meeting. These are his disciples, not the twelve but disciples, followers of him, people that had made some commitment yeah. to go with him and support him and be with him. From that time, many, not just a few, many of his disciples went back. Isn't that what we were just talking about? Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. went back and they walked no more with him. Literally, that means they went back to the things that were behind them. So they went back away from living and walking by faith, they went back to living by tradition and living by natural rules. And here's the interesting thing. Jesus did not go, whoa, whoa, wait, 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 everybody. That's not what I meant. <laughs> uh, he made no attempt. Give, to, he made no attempt. To recover that. He did not. He was right the first time. He didn't need to recover it. Well, and... That was one of the purposes of this message. I see that. Yeah. It tried their faith. We don't know how much faith you've got when you understand it. It's when you don't understand it that we find out about your faith. We don't know how much faith you've got when your bills are paid. Things are going good. It's when they're not paid and things are due or past due. We don't know how much faith you got when you're healed in your body and you feel good. It's when you've gotten worse for the last several months. Now we find out if you got faith. You know, Judas never overcame that. Yeah. Uh, he dealt with him right then. He said, have not I chosen you 12 and one of you is a devil? Right. He, he, ne he never came back. From, I don't know where, when and where he got off, mm -hmm. but... Uh, he, he, he never recovered from, from this time on to the finish. If he'd have been honest, he'd have probably left that day with the rest of them. He would have. But he hung around. All of them stayed. thought about it because they said, where would we go? <laughs> exactly. The very next, very next verse. Yeah. Hey, yeah. There wasn't any of them that said, well, I'm not leaving here. Praise God. <laughs> no, they, well, where would we go? Uh -huh. But then Peter came alive. He, he caught hold of it yep. and stirred himself up and said, you're the one with the word of life, mm -hmm. and I'm not leaving you. And that is passing the trial of your faith. Let me ask you something, Keith. This never occurred to me before that, this very moment. It could very well be that that stand, that moment, is what kept him from going and hanging himself like Judas did. Mm -hmm. 
when he literally betrayed the Lord. He just literally spoke out against him and cursed at the sound of his name. Mm -hmm. But he didn't go hang himself, and he, and he repented. He, he, he wasn't willing to just let go of this, and Jesus just loved him and mm -hmm. brought him on back in there. But that, that one statement of commitment right in the middle while everybody else is walking away uh, could have been the very moment that gave the Lord opportunity to just hang on mm -hmm. to him when he was so close there mm -hmm. to jump in ship. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The one simple phrase that he did that the, all these others didn't do that left, he gave God some time. He did, didn't he? He gave him some time. And that's as simple as that sounds. That can be the difference between going under or making it. Because if you trust somebody, and that's what this is about, faith, like Jesus said in Matthew, excuse me, Mark 11, 22, have faith in God. Not, not just in the movement, not just in the feeling Faith in the person of God. You and Miss Gloria have been outstanding friends to me and Phyllis for decades. And I, I believe in you. And I trust you. And if somebody came and told me that you did something awful or you messed up, I would not just immediately believe that. Or if I saw you or heard you do something that looked bizarre, I still wouldn't say, well, I'm through with Kenneth Copeland. I'd want to I'd wanna talk to you. I'd mm -hmm. want to hear from you. Mm -hmm. I'd want to know what's going on. But now, if I heard some little rumor or some little something, and I said, well, that's it. I'm, I'm, we're not sowing into that anymore. I'm never going to be associated with that. Well, that means I didn't believe in you to start with. Mm -hmm. I see that. Yeah. And be, while everything was good and it was maybe conducive or beneficial for me to be around, everything's fine. But then when something comes up that, that's a challenge, I unhook. It means I didn't believe to begin with. And that's what this is, talks about. It said the Lord knew from the beginning who believed in him. And he didn't need that men should testify of him. And so when this, that's why he didn't follow after him and he didn't beg them, no, please give me a chance to, to explain. No, if they believed in him, even if it just sounded bizarre, they would have sat right there. And then he said, well, there's just some stuff here we don't yeah, understand, I better find but, out about <laughs> but we are going to, maybe he'll explain it tomorrow <laughs> or maybe, maybe he'll teach on a new series next week. But they would not just have gotten up and said, I can't be a part of this anymore. That proves their faith wasn't there to start with. They were just jumping on the bandwagon with everybody else because mm -hmm. it was popular and the faith wasn't there. You know what else it proved? He didn't say anything that day that they could not have known from the Word. Mm -hmm. It was in the Abrahamic covenant. It was in, um, it, it was in the Torah. Mm -hmm. Everything he said was in there. Mm -hmm. So there was not any, not something strange and weird. It was only strange and weird if you didn't know what the Word said about it. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can't just jump up and, and run off mm -hmm. um, and just declare him wrong. Mm -hmm. Not when he's been right all the time up to there. Mm -hmm. But just like you said, they didn't have any word base to believe it in the first place. Mm -hmm. All they, they just got shook up and stirred up by the miracles and the food they ate mm -hmm. free of charge and all that. Yep. But then had they already known it in the word, had they taken what he said and gone back to the scripture and said, well, now here, you know, here's the scripture that he used when he preached that. Let's see what, let's see what else the word has to say. Mm -hmm. Had they done that, they'd have come back and said, uh, let's don't be too hasty here. Let's yeah. go with the word and see what see what he's talking about. Uh -huh. The as a teenager, I had an allergic reaction to some poison ivy and sumac stuff, 
And as a, as a baby, I, a child, I got in it and smeared it all over myself <laughs> and didn't know what I was doing. And man, it affected me some way. And certain times of the year, I'd just break out in hives and I'd be bed fast. It was more than just a little itch and scratch. And this went on for a long time. And I'd, I didn't know much of the word, but I knew Job had some problems along that line. So <laughs> I read, I'd read in the book of Job and I was like, man, you know, I didn't, I didn't know much about healing or faith or anything like that, but I just read in there. And then after I got into ministry and learned a few things, um, still I'd, I'd read about the book of Job and it seems that the book of Job is about the question, why? Because at one point, you know, when some of the things first started happening, it said Job said uh, he didn't curse God or speak ill-advisedly. But then later on, the chapter starts off with, with Job saying, why? Why was I born to see days like this? Why? I'm a righteous man. Why? And that's when his three friends came in and, and they tried to answer him why. And it went on and on and on. And you got 30-something chapters after that of why. And for years, and, and so many people that talk about it, you see they're talking about why, why, why. And finally one day the Spirit of God spoke to me because when God showed up on the scene and spoke in the whirlwind, he did not just answer the question. He didn't just say, here's why. He asked him about the creation, and could he explain this? Could he explain that? He didn't just answer. And this is what came to me. The, the, the purpose of the book and, and the understanding of faith is not the answer to why. It's what you do when you don't know why. Oh, that's powerful. That is the trial of faith. And it's not... Our faith must not be just in faith principles or in this and that or in affiliations. Our faith must be in the person of God, in the person of Jesus, and that we trust him no matter what we understand or what we don't, because there'll always be stuff we don't understand. There'll always be things we don't have the answer mm -hmm. to, but the thing that will get you and I and all of us through the worst times that can exist, through our tears, through our ignorance, through our challenges, we look up through it and go, I don't know all about it, but I know this. God, you are a good God, and I trust you, and I don't care what they say. I will never doubt you. I'm here. It's me and you. <laughs> I'm never yeah. going. I'm never leaving. And that will get you through anything. He did that when his wife, mm -hmm. his wife committed the sin that Satan accused before God, Job, of, he'll, yeah. he'll curse you to your face. Yeah. Well, his wife did it and, mm -hmm. and just and got the family just slaughtered. Mm. She said, why don't you curse God and die? Mm. So she'd already done it in heart. Mm. His answer was, woman, I don't care if he decides to kill me. That's his business. I will serve him. Yeah. So he put his faith in the very character yeah. of God. Didn't yes, he? in the faithfulness of God. Oh, yes, sir. We're out of time. <laughs> Brother Keith and I will be back in just a moment.